Welcome back to the Padilla Family Homestead. Today we are making pumpkin curry. Super delicious, uh, great flavors for fall, um, kind of warms you up, and it's gluten-free, which is awesome. So it's a great way to use that leftover pumpkin. So we're gonna jump in and get this started. So this recipe takes just about as long as it takes for the rice to cook. So about 30 or so minutes. I start out with turning my pan on and adding some oil to coat the bottom. Add how much rice I want to cook into the pot. Add some dehydrated bell peppers into the rice. I love doing this with my rice. Right now I'm using the Azure Standard dehydrated bell peppers. I have gotten the Augustin Farms bell peppers and really like those as well. They're red and green. But it's super easy and convenient and it adds a punch of flavor. It's actually how my daughter got to start liking bell peppers. So I get the rice going and as soon as that comes up to a boil, I will turn it down to simmer. And I am going to now start on the curry. Um, I'm cho I chopped up some red onion and I'm adding that to the pot. You can absolutely use shallots or yellow onion, whatever you want to. The red onion though added um, some color and it's what we had on hand. The next thing I'm gonna add is yellow bell pepper. Now you'll see I do it in chunks here, and then I remember part way through, shoot, I don't want chunks. I want my food to be appealing. I wanna slice it in, um, I wanna slice it in long skinny strips. Um, the more you have different shapes and textures, the more appealing food is to eat actually. And so um, I switched over to that. That's how I prefer it, and it cooks better for me. So I'm letting this saute. Now this whole thing I have um, on 1.4 speed and then I speed up in between just so you have an idea of the time. This is the sausage I'm using in the dish. Uh, it's gluten free and it works for us. We like the flavor of it. You could choose whatever sausage you want. Just make sure whatever it's flavored with is going to work for your dish. I don't think I would use Italian sausage or breakfast sausage in a curry. Okay, so this is going to saute down a little bit. Um, I'm going to come back in with that. Uh, I love this tool. I realize that I probably shouldn't be using it for this dish because when I add the spices in, it will get stuck into the corners of it. Um, I got that through Pampered Chef. They do have a version of it on Amazon. This is amazing for ground beef and all kinds of stuff. It's kind of my one size fits all kitchen tool. So the next thing we're gonna add is a touch of dried parsley and then we are going to add in two tablespoons of garlic. This garlic I had uh, minced and froze into tablespoons into the freezer, super handy to have on hand. Um, I totally suggest making those. And now I'm gonna switch over because I'm realizing that that paddle is not going to work with the spices. So I switch over to what I should have started with. And we're going to start adding in all of our seasonings. I am going to be adding in here our curry first. I'm using the Madras Mild Curry from Azure Standard. And I add in four teaspoons of that that are heaping. They're not like evenly leveled. They're just four teaspoons. Um, I really like this curry powder because it's not super spicy. It is mild and I actually can enjoy it. Then I'm also adding in three teaspoons of smoked paprika and two teaspoons of roasted chili powder. Both of these I also got from Azure Standard on my last haul. And you can see that the teaspoons are not super flat. Again, I'm just scooping them out and adding them. And then we're gonna get two teaspoons of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of ground ginger. The next thing we're gonna add in here is just some salt and pepper to taste. Now the curry powder does have turmeric in it, so I do like adding pepper to activate some of those health benefits, and I used a seasoned salt here. 
I don't use a ton of salt, but I did add a tiny bit to this dish. And now I'm gonna stir it up. And this kind of looks, when you first are making it, kind of grainy and like way too much seasoning, but it's not. So basically what we want to do here is toast all of those seasonings. And we have that avocado oil in the bottom of the pan from when we started and whatever liquids the onion and the bell pepper are releasing, right? But that's probably not going to be enough. Um, and this, as these seasonings are toasting up in the pan, they're absorbing that liquid as well. So you're just going to keep an eye on this and you're going to keep stirring it. Um, I keep scraping the paddle because the seasonings will kind of get stuck to the your whatever you're mixing the mixture with. And so I scrape that on the edge of the pan, drop it back into the mixture and then stir again. And this I'm going to do for mm, five to seven minutes. Um, off and on and while it's cooking if I start seeing it stick or that it's drying out more then I'm going to add a little bit of liquid and I have a third of a cup measuring cup of water sitting right next to the pot right there and so you'll see me add about half of that at one time cook it down a little bit more and then we will add the other half of it and then you can squirt in some lemon juice to add the acid factor um, to it to just, it, it, the complexity of flavors in this dish is amazing. Do not skip the lemon juice. It is really good. So the reason why we're toasting all these herbs now is one, it brings out all of the flavors, which is really important in this dish because we're going to end up adding some coconut milk, which will thin it out a little bit. Um, but you really want in a curry the complexity of flavors and those, those herbs to be really releasing everything they have. The other reason for it is, is if you add in the herbs after you add in the coconut milk and stuff, They don't absorb the same way. Um, when I did that on my first time trying to make this. I was trying to decide how many teaspoons of curry, how many teaspoons of the paprika and chili powder and stuff. And I could not, um, I didn't get it right the first time around. And so I wanted to add more of those to it and it ended up being grainier. They just didn't absorb the same way. So it is really important to be toasting those um, as you go. And you can see that that rice is boiling pretty good there. Um, I have it turned down now to a simmer because it got brought up to the boil. So it is simmering now and it will start to boil a little less at a time. <laughs> or should I say just boil a little slower. Um, because it will go down to the simmer and cook it. And it's brown rice, so it cooks a little bit longer than um, white rice. So I try to make sure that I am letting the herbs sit for a little bit so they can roast. But I don't walk too far away because this stuff will burn to the bottom of your pan pretty quickly. You may need to, if you're using stainless steel... You may need to be adding your water sooner than I did. Um, it, it depends on your cooking utensils and all of that. Um, so just know what you have and how your stove works. There are periods in here where I'm really um, scraping the bottom and scraping the edges, trying to make sure that nothing sticks. That is the key right now. But man, does the house smell so good as I am making this. I wish there was smell-o-vision. The level of the different flavors that you can smell throughout here is just, it's just amazing. So at this point, we're getting ready to add the coconut milk. I'm using um, organic canned coconut milk. And when you use that... Um, kind of all of the 
uh, fat solids are solidified at the top of the can usually and then it almost looks like coconut water at the bottom of the can um, so don't be surprised if you see that I'm sure you can use the coconut milk that's in the refrigerated area um, I just prefer to use the can um, I decide to add in some Cholula this is totally up to you. Um, I added more this time than I did the last time and I don't handle spice well and it was a little too spicy for me. Um, however, it wasn't spicy enough for my husband. Um, I think it was just about perfect for my daughter. And now we sound like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, right? So um, you can add in the Cholula if you want to or whatever hot sauce you choose to use. And then um, add in the coconut milk. Now, normally I would have added in the pumpkin at this point, right before I add in the coconut milk, and I forgot to. So I'm going to be adding that in in a little bit. But I do just, you can add it in at whatever point as long as it gets mixed in. It did not really change the flavor profile at all for me. Or the texture profile by adding it after I add the coconut milk versus beforehand. So we are just mixing all of that in, really getting the coconut milk solids um, melted down and incorporated in so it's evenly distributed. I'm also trying to make sure all of those herbs and seasonings and things are getting mixed in really well into the coconut milk and not just sitting on the bottom and burning. And now I'm going to add in my third a cup of pumpkin. Um, this just incorporates in really easy and it, just, it doesn't pick up. The color does not do justice on camera. Um, this is a very, I mean, it looks yellowy orange, but it's a very orange uh, dish. Um, it looks more yellow orange than like this mustardy yellow that you see on camera right now. So at this point, we are just letting it sit um, and simmer and continually stirring while the rice finishes cooking. Uh, this took about another 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I did not put all of that on this video because nobody wants to sit for 10 to 15 minutes and watch water boil and make the, watch the rice cook. So here we are that little bit later and our dish is just about done. Um, I switched out to a metal spoon to serve because I can't serve on the paddle and I'm going to be mixing the rice so that way the bell peppers are all incorporated in. Okay and it's as easy as that. They get done just about the same time. Um, so all I do is I take my bowl and I put in some rice in the bottom. I love having the bell pepper in the rice. I do that a lot. And then um, I'm going to top it with some of this yummy curry. So you have that. I'm making a mess over here. I put a little bit more hot sauce than I did it last time. It's a little spicier, but it's still good. And then I top it with some French fresh cilantro. Courtesy of my husband running to the store because I forgot I didn't have any. So that's it. Super yummy, super delicious. I'm actually gonna go get a fork and take a bite. Oh, it's still really hot. Mm-hmm. That's good. Spicy, tons of flavors, super complex. I love it. You should try it. Great thing to do with some of that extra pumpkin puree from all the pumpkin baking. And it's gluten free to boot. I hope you try this. We will see you on the next video. We're going to go have dinner.